Satan Justin Martyr was one of the earliest defenders of the Christian faith. Thoroughly Catholic in his theology, he was masterful in his apologies. Of Justin's work, a good amount of ancient manuscripts containing his masterful treatises still exist to this day. Perhaps most recognized are his apologies and his dialogue with Trifo. In Justin's first apology, he contains a section in which he gives an ancient insight into the mind of the early church. This food we call the Eucharist, Eucharistia, of which no one is allowed to partake except one who believes that the things we teach are true, and has received the washing for forgiveness of sins and for rebirth, and who lives as Christ handed down to us. For we do not receive these things as common bread or common drink, but as Jesus Christ, our Savior, being incarnate by God's word, took flesh and blood for our salvation, so also we have been taught that the food consecrated by the word of prayer, which comes from him, from which our flesh and blood are nourished by transformation, is the flesh and blood of that incarnate Jesus. First Apology 66 in dialoguing about the Eucharist, Justin provides us with the most important words that were to be said over the bread and the wine in order for them to become the actual body and the actual blood of our Lord and Savior. Martyr was clear that this is my body and this is my blood, intoning the anamnesis, intoning that which means do this in remembrance of me. It tells us that the prayer, that after this prayer, they are no longer common bread and no longer common drink in reference to the bread and the wine. Justin is very clear that after the sanctification, these elements are no longer common. It's no longer bread and it's no longer drink. Justin literally tells us in the Greek, Ugar has koinon arton ude koinon palma. He is clear that after the prayer, the bread, the artos, and the drink are not koinon. They are not common anymore. The Greek word koinon is of great importance to us because it is here where Justin tells us that these elements are no longer ordinary after the prayer. We can find the author to the epistle of the Hebrews using the exact same word in the Koine Greek in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 29. It is important to understand that the Greek form koinon, which is a form, which is a form of koinos, appears many times in the scriptures and in the patristic writings. But in this instance, and in the context in which Justin is writing, he is clearly utilizing the usage of the term which denotes something of normal or of lesser value. The food, since it is now the actual body and blood of Christ, is no longer koinon. It is no longer normal food. But it is important the food, since it is now the actual body and blood of Christ, is no longer koinon. It is no longer normal food. But it is important to understand the language in which Justin Martyr writes to us in. Justin, who is famous for his run-on type of Greek writing, is clear that for him, as well as for the ancient church, the food was not as regular bread and not as regular wine. Those regular, or those normal nourishments, are not what transforms the inner Christian. But rather, it is what is not common, what is not coin on. As the great O'Connor notes, this nourishment, says Justin, takes place through a change, through a transformation. Kata metavolen, in the Greek by which he would seem to be referring to the digestive process by which the Eucharistic mystery is assimilated by the believer. From its use in the context of digestion, one is able to gather some of the significance the word will have when used to the change that takes place in the bread and wine when they are sanctified or consecrated. Justin further tells us how this food is no longer coined on, no longer common food, and no longer common drink. It's after the prayer. The food consecrated by the word of prayer, the ukes lagu tu par artu. Indeed, this food, Justin tells us, indeed this food is the flesh and blood of that incarnate Jesus. Iesu kai sarka kai haima. 
it is important to remember the food that is consecrated by the word of prayer, by this is my body, this is my blood, do this as an anamnesis for me. It is that flesh and that blood of Jesus Christ. And the words couldn't be any clearer. They couldn't be any clearer. Justin Martyr, this early church father, this early witness to the faith, is very clear that the Eucharistic teaching of the church should be preserved for all times. God bless you.